Hi friends! It so happened that I got such a flashlight. It's practically new, but with a dead battery. The owner asked me to completely renew it and make it shine very brightly. The remake, which I intended to do, is quite expensive, more expensive than the flashlight itself. But if I also shoot a video, I will get a personal benefit from this deal. Well, now to the point. The era of such flashlights is long gone. Once they were expensive and cool. In general, not everyone could afford such a monster. And to this day, they look cool and it would be a sin to throw them away. The main problem of such lights is the incandescent lamp and the type of the battery that is outdated for portable devices. But the case is very high quality and durable. The flashlight is designed for all sorts of extreme cases, so there is moisture protection, though not full. There is a large reflector and it is metal, because the plastic will simply melt from the temperature of the lamp. And also, the front glass isn't some kind of plastic, but real glass. At the back there is a LED warning light. The handle is comfortable. It's pleasant to hold the flashlight in your hand. Below we have a stand or a position lock. The charging connector and one of the switches have rubber sealed. The flashlight, as already said, is practically new. It includes instructions, strap, mains charger for 6 volts, 300 mA, an additional charger from the cigarette lighter socket and a spare 15 watt halogen lamp. This type flashlight with such an appearance was used by fishermen and people who often went out into the countryside. Once upon a time, before the coming of powerful LEDs, its dim beam of light locks were very bright. So if you ask the seller for a powerful flashlight, he would certainly suggest you something like this. The flashlight is quite long range, but even a 30 watt halogen shines dimly, there is almost no side illumination. The flashlight battery died because it lay unused on the shelf for a long time. I restored the battery later, but purely for fun since we will no longer use it. The fact that the old battery will be replaced by anyone I decided at the very beginning. Let's put up a modern lithium ion, they are lighter in weight, have more energy at the same weight and are more durable. The incandescent lamp must also be replaced. At first I plan to install a powerful LED like the Cree MTG2. One reflection. I realize that it isn't the best solution since you need to seriously bother with cooling. But even if we organize more or less optimal cooling for these powerful metrics, it will not work efficiently due to the complete absence of holes in the body of the flashlight. I didn't want to drill holes in the case. The MTG2 LED heats up a lot, it has a decent power of 18 watts. Plus, this reflector isn't quite what you need for MTG2, you also had to buy a normal lens. In addition, my matrixes are for 36 volt, and I didn't have a boost driver. But I didn't want to do it from zero since the time for rework was limited. The second option is to use LEDs for car headlines. In the auto parts store that my friend owns, I tried several of these LEDs and realized that almost all budget ones have such blue areas. This isn't cool because, of course there are good, expensive bulbs without this bulb, but I didn't find such in the store. In addition, although such lamps have a fan, they may overheat in the closed case and will not work for a long time. The third option is motor car Zenon. Zenon shines brightly, you don't need to invent anything and both the ignition unit and the lamp itself can be easily bought and replaced. Yes, Zenon also heats up, but this is a normal operating mode for it, so the problem with cooling the lamp itself disappears. But we must hold in mind that the heat from the lamp will be transferred to the filling of the flashlight. Xenon lamps, like LED lamps, need a driver, but in the case of Xenon, this is a high voltage driver or ballast. I chose a cheap 35 watt driver and also a cheap 6000 Kelvin lamp. The disadvantage of Xenon is that the lamp heats up the front glass very much and you need to be more careful not to get burned. Another not significant but still a minus is that Xenon needs time to enter the operating mode. The ballast of course also heats up and will heat up lithium batteries which do not like it. You can drill ventilation holes in the case, 
but again we will spoil the appearance and moisture protection will suffer. As a result, during the test, it turned out that with continuous operation for 30 minutes, the temperature inside the case was about 65 degrees, so I warned the owner not to turn on the flashlight continuously for more than 30 minutes. Now a short commercial break. Tired of homemade PCB technology or your boards aren't as pretty as you'd like? GLC will manufacture PCBs of any complexity, size and color. The minimum cost for boards of 10 to 10 cm boards starts at $2. You can design and simulate your circuits, design your PCBs in the site Easy EDA, then order it directly from the site. Select SMT component in design, convert PCB into Gerber, get 10% discount coupon and place PCB plus SMD order on GLC PCB. The PCB's quality is at the highest level. The link to the GLC PCB website will be in the description below the video. The battery is lithium 3S2P, that is, three cells are connected in series and then two assemblies connected in parallel. The type is 18650 from laptops, each has a capacity of 1900 mAh on average. The batteries are good, selected on the basis of internal resistance and capacity. As a result, we have a battery of 10.8 volts or 12.6 volts in a fully charged state with a capacity of 3800 mAh. The battery protection board is like this, they can be for 3S and 4S. We need the first option. Initially I put another board at 10 amps, but then I refused it. If working protection, the output voltage will store only when we connect the charger. In this case, it is out of place. The batteries were installed in holders and then connected with a nickel strip by soldering. Yes, you can use the spot welding, but there isn't much difference. The main thing isn't to overheat the cans. In my case, each soldering takes 2-3 to three seconds. The battery capacity is enough for an hour of continuous operation of the flashlight. Maybe it isn't very much, but it must be borne in mind that the flashlight is very powerful. From the 11 volt source, the input current was about 3.4 amps. The power was around 37 watts. Online, there are many projects to convert such flashlights to Zenit. Almost always, the ignition unit itself is brought out, either to save space for the batteries or to cool the unit better. In my case, the unit is located inside for purely aesthetic reasons. Thick and rather long connection wires which come out of the ignition unit will disturb us, so we open the unit. At first, I replaced with short power wires, so cheap locks fail quite often. In former times, they were brought in bundles for repairs. Usually, the power transistor and the input capacitor burst, which most likely cannot withstand the power ripples in the car. The circuit itself is as cheap as possible and the transistor is poorly cooled. Then I removed the board, added thermal pads, fixed it with the sealant and put it in place. True, in the course of this manipulation, part of the aluminum body of the ballast and screws were lost. Fortunately, I found a replacement in my trash. There will be no power ripple in our design, so I hope the unit will work for a long time. At the very end, it remains to fix the lamp in the reflector, while it is also necessary to focus the light beam. To fix the lamp, I used a heat-resistant sealant that can withstand temperatures up to 350 degrees Celsius. In this part of the device, such temperatures will never be. The maximum that I measured on the back of the reflector, which, by the way, is varnished, is 75 degrees after 30 minutes of work. I took these photos on the first day, with the same camera settings. This is how the native incandescent lamp shines. This is how an inexpensive 20 watt LED lamp for car headlights shines. And this is how Xenon shines. The flashlight turned out to be powerful, bright and long range with a pleasant side illumination. Of course, there is a drawback associated with heating, but the LEDs also heat up and get very hot.
Of the advantages I note good maintainability. Both the ignition unit and the lamp can be bought at an automotive store and quite cheaply. True, to replace the lamp you also need to buy a sealant, but this is easier than finding it and replacing a powerful LED or a driver for it. Note everything is so beautiful inside, but the wires cannot be hidden anywhere. Their insulation copes well with the temperatures inside the case. The battery is tucked into the back of the case, where temperatures are minimal. In case of any problems, ballast failure or accidental short circuits, the protection board will instantly disconnect the battery. All the components are fixed with a sealant, so that nothing can shake inside. As for the charger, there were two of them in the kit, and these chargers will no longer work for a new battery. This kind of industrial mains charger will be used. This is a special charger for charging through a lithium battery. In the case of batteries of the same type, the charger must provide a stable output voltage of 12.6 volts and a current of no more than 1.5 to 2 amps, and the current must also be stabilized. Similar chargers can be bought inexpensively in Chinese online stores. They fully comply with the above requirements. The owner doesn't need charging from the cigarette lighter, so I will just return it without alteration. If anyone is interested inside a such a charge, there is a usual parametric voltage regulator. A large radiator makes it possible to see, but the circuit is simple transistor, zinnier diet, resistor and a fuse. The original lead battery isn't as critical to the charging parameters as lithium, so such a simple charging system will work without problems. Although purely for me, if there was a system that charges the battery with a stable current and voltage, that is CV slash CC, it would be much better. I took a walk in the evening with this flashlight and I will tell you it's cool. It's cool when you have a lightsaber in your hands that shines just like the headlights of rushing fast cars. The owner was pleased and I hope he will also like this video. This video comes to an end. Please don't forget to read this video. If you have any questions, you are welcome to our group. Well, if you're not lazy, you can subscribe to my Instagram. All the links are in the description. Now, I say goodbye until we meet again. With you as always, was Kaisyan TV.